welcome everyone um, to this session on GKS. And the purpose of this, uh, having this session is to help all the GKS applicants, aspirants who are going to apply for GKS undergraduate this year, I mean for 2020-25, as well as the other students who are going to apply for GKS graduate scholarship next year, uh, or we may be even undergraduate uh, aspirants for next year. Uh, so we'll try to answer the most you know, basic questions, most crucial questions, and we will also be getting some you know, uh, tips from the scholars. So first of all, uh, let me uh, thank uh, the four GKS scholars who kindly accepted our invitation to join this session. So we have with us uh, Anjali from uh, GKS 2023 batch. Uh, and we have Sakshi Bharti, uh, who got selected for GKS uh, Graduate Scholarship this year, 2024. And Shalini, uh, who also got selected for GKS Graduate Scholarship 2024. And Shritama, uh, again, for GKS Graduate Scholarship 2024. So we have three scholars for GKS Graduate. So if you are going to uh, apply for GKS Graduate, uh, you are very lucky. You have so many, you know scholars who can answer your questions. Uh, for grad undergraduate also, we have Anjali Shi. And Anjali Shi, I think uh, she has, like she's very active online on YouTube and Instagram. So she, I'm sure she has guided many students. So uh, she has like good knowledge about you know, documentation and all the processes. So so I think she will be able to guide you very well. I will try to speak um, uh, very, very less. I will, I will let them handle your questions. I will let them guide you. So first of all, let's uh, start with like, uh, uh, and we also have with us, let me see if uh, we also have with us um, Kashish, I think um, all of you know her, uh, the LKI instructor, and uh, she will be helping me with, you know, she has like uh, spent a lot of time sorting your questions that you added in the Excel sheet and everything. And uh, she'll be helping me with the chat. I hope that when you send a chat message, your questions, please be clear and precise and don't send the same question again and again. Okay. Uh, so, so I will request Kashish also to please help me if I miss any questions in the chat. Yeah, so let's start with a brief uh, intro session uh, of our guests. Okay, so uh, so quickly if they can introduce themselves and if they can, they're free to add anything that they want to add in the introduction. So uh, let's start with Anjali Shi. Yeah, Anjali Shi, Anjali Shi. So it's been a really long time and thank you so much yeah. for inviting me. Chai so, sir. Uh, so let me introduce myself. My name is Anjali and I am a BFS. I'm studying in BFS, Busan University of Foreign Studies, or I'm a GKS 20, 2023 undergraduate scholar. And my major is international relations. And my major is also like a Korean, but Korean. Okay. So I'm not studying in English. My major is international relations, but I'm learning all my subjects and my studies are in korean yes. <laughs> but they are korean no more 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 then let me uh, ask Sakshi Shi to briefly introduce herself. I'm Sakshi Varti and I got selected this year for graduate and I got selected by Jeju National University through university track and my major is chemistry and currently I am doing my language year here. And thank, thank you. you for giving us opportunity. Thank you. There. Okay, then we have uh, Shalini Shi. Shalini Shi. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, so I got selected this year uh, in GKS 2024. And currently I'm in London University. And my major is in Eastern History. And now I'm in my language here. I just started like two days back. So, yes. Thank mm. you so much. Thank you, Dalanishi. And then we have Shrit Mashi. The Anya Mashi of Shrit
I hope uh, Sharani, she, Sakshi, she, and she, you know, she are adapting well to Korean. Since you already know Korean language, so I'm sure you wouldn't be having much problem. Ashritma, you are unable to unmute Cham Kamanyu. Let me see if I can. Um, did you get any? Yes. Oh, sorry. I think I forgot to make you go. Yeah, I think you are. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Sritama. I'm uh, studying in DSU, Dongso University. My major is film and it will be taught in Korean. Uh, currently, I'm in my language year and yeah, I'm adapting well here. Thanks to Sarah for inviting us here. It's a great opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Sritama. And you have like, uh, I think, few, we have like, I think, a number of students from LKI who are already there. So I'm not sure if you are in touch, but um, I'm sure like they'll be happy to help you if you have any problem. And you can, you can let me know if you are having any problem in Korea with anything, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Let me know. Maybe I can help you in some way. Okay. So yeah, <clears throat> uh, no need to get us. I'm sure you will do very well. There. So, uh, so let's start our session. Uh, with the, a brief overview of this GKS, you know, mm, uh, process, right? So I think all of you are, first of all, let me uh, state this very obvious thing at the very beginning. I see so many questions in the Excel sheet and also in LKI group and everywhere else that uh, like display that people haven't read the guidelines, documents, everything properly. Those are just very, very basic questions. If you just go through the documents, you will find the answer to those questions yourself. So uh, first of all, I would request that don't be lazy, okay? Don't be, don't think that someone else will do the due diligence for you. Someone else will read everything and then uh, put it in a plate and serve to you. If you want to, this is a very prestigious scholarship. And uh, once you get selected, uh, I'm sure like Angela, she will tell you, uh, and other students who are studying now uh, that it's going life is going to be tough there study is not easy actually so if you are not like if you are finding this document very difficult to read then uh, you know you are in for a you know difficult surprise so so don't be lazy read the document properly and most of the things are already explained some things i see that they are not there in the document they haven't talked about those topics but you are creating those problems out of nowhere uh, like for example if you ask me like if i have to apply for gks do i have to be you know uh, six feet tall or something that it's not mentioned why are you asking this question like they are not talking about the height of a students so don't make unnecessary questions okay so, for example, if they are not asking the, that uh, learners should be having topic level six and or uh, they should know Chinese language or anything, you, you shouldn't ask questions like, do I need to study Chinese or do I need to have topic level six? No, if it is not mentioned in the documents, you don't need that. Okay, uh, that's a simple thing. But yes, there are some things that are very, very confusing. And, and I'm sure like most of the students are having issues with those things. Uh, so basic steps, basic processes, you already, I'm sure, know uh, the embassy track and the university track. These two tracks are there. So if you are going to apply through your embassy track, you basically can choose three universities, right? And you have to choose one university, minimum one university from the regional uh, universities list. Okay. That is the uh, mandatory criteria. And remaining two universities can be any. And your applications will be submitted to the Korean embassy, okay? And uh, you have the contact details of, and everything on the embassy website, as well as the website of LKI we have shared. So for any clarification, you can call them. And for university track, your applications will go to the respective university. Now, if you have already selected the university where you want to apply, you can just go to the website of the university and I'm sure on the notice board, you will find a notification about GKS. Okay, just read that notification because the rules can be a little bit different. Obviously, most of the rules will be same for every university, but some rules can be slightly different from university to university. So find the university that where you want to apply, check the rules there, and then you can apply there directly. They will also have contact details of the person who is in charge of GKS in that university, like their international admission office, and they will help you if you have any questions. Now, 
coming to uh, the so this is the first step that you have to you know follow in application process now the most confusing things things uh, is about documentation like what documents to prepare so let me uh, give the mic to anjali she and i wanted to briefly explain the documentation part what documents are exactly required and and i will be asking some follow up questions okay uh, wherever i feel uh, that the students may be having confusion maybe i will interrupt you anjali and i will i will I'll ask you some follow up questions yes i hope that it can help you like i will just like briefly say like the documents name like first you have you should have a application form which is called like gks application form okay so application form you don't need to find it like where where are you going to find don't panic you just need to download there is a like attached files so if you go in study in korea website and you go for the gks option and they, if you scroll down there are file attached to it the gks university information gks application form and gks guidelines so you don't need to panic for that so application form and like like that personal statement study plan and assessment like that medical thing everything is attached to the application form so you don't need to find it somewhere else okay and the next thing that you need is some apostille document which includes your uh, like a proof of your citizenship and proof of your family which like for your proof of citizenship i will suggest you to give your birth certificate apostille and like if people are saying that we don't have birth certificate but we have voter id card so you can give a voter id card also if you have it but apostille and for your parents you can give like voter id card uh, voter id card of your mother and your father apostille and the next thing that you have to prove if you are education related so for first thing that is high school graduation certificate so high school graduation certificate is your 12th class result just, there is just, no other uh, certificate i will interrupt sorry uh, one okay. more thing uh sakshi sharmi and shitma feel free to like uh, add whenever you see that you know have some extra points or anything feel free to add any time okay regarding the the citizenship one uh, mm -hmm. a few follow up questions i have before we move on so passport let's say some people have passport for themselves as well as their parents so so in that case does it have to be a postal pass no something passport, no, passport, no, passport do not need not, not required but yeah. the passport should have the names mentioned like father's name exactly should match and yes yes father and mother both names should match and everything mm. so passport if they have like no need to have any birth, birth certificate or any other thing no but if they don't have passport then voter id uh, will suffice but it has to be a postal yeah yes and the spelling but should be correct spelling, like in yeah, every document like voter id is usually our spellings are like messed up so in that case what to do some affidavit Some I have similar, yeah i had similar issue so basically i submitted my birth certificate and also my uh, parents passport with that okay. uh, but um, in my uh, passport my father's name uh, was like mentioned uh, first name middle name and last name but okay. in my birth certificate my father's first name and last name was mentioned so oh. the middle name was not there so mm -hmm. this might have caused some uh, confusion that's why i did an affidavit and i also postilled that document just to avoid any kind of confusion so you got it affidavit from like typical court uh, major battle mm -hmm. like Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. From there. Mm, and yes, I have submitted that? the original copy, original okay. apostille copy of that. You you applied through university track, right? University track. Yes. So you just had to send one uh, copy. Yeah. If you are applying through embassy, you can just make a three copies of the same affidavit and submit that. Yes. Okay. I think any other points to add, like with the citizenship uh, issue, citizenship document issue. anyone uh, please don't send them aadhar card even if you apostille your aadhar card they yeah. are not acceptable outside the india many of the student are just doing they are uh, apostilling their aadhar card their parents aadhar card and they are sending to particular university and in last nid will reject that so please don't send them aadhar card because you are investing your money and at the end you will not get any results so aadhar card is not acceptable outside the india okay great point so either birth certificate or passport of everyone or your you know apostille voter id and if there is any name issue make an affidavit for the you know correct spelling and get it apostille and submit it together okay i think we are done with the citizenship document okay let's move on
Yeah, okay. So now we will move on to like education documents. So that is first one that you need is high school graduation certificate. So high school gradu graduation certificate is just your 12th class result. Okay, so there is no other like something that you are high school graduated. There is no certificate like this. There is just 12th class result. So you have to apostle your 12th class result as it is. You don't need to like, like first people ask me like, do we need some other kind of certificate that we have to ask to our school? And there is nothing neat. So you just use your 12th class certificate for your high school graduation certificate, apostle. And for second one that we have academic transcript. Like academic, first we have to like know what is academic transcript. So what academic transcript is the average of your three years of high school, which includes 10th, 11th and 12th. Okay. So 10th, 11th and 12th, like some schools are really providing like the academic transcript by their own. Like, okay, they will have that average and they will give it to you. But some school don't even like my school didn't provide me. Okay. So I go for 10th, 11th, 12th mark sheets. Or uh, like I just apostle three of them and I attached it together and I submit it as an academic transcript. Okay, so you can do like you that. Do any like combination of the marks or anything? Because no, some I people didn't are getting average of tenth and eleventh and twelfth and no, nothing no. required, right? So your no. twelfth marks are the final eligibility marks. They don't care about your tenth marks or yes. anything. Yeah, you can uh, attach the like uh, a mark sheet for reference purposes, mm -hmm. 10th, 11th, and 12th. But ultimately, mm -hmm. your final score in 12th is going to matter and not your, yes. you know, 10th or 11th or, uh, you know, other marks. Yes. Mm. And, and actually, one see, more... I have one question. Okay. Uh, actually, a few of the students are asking me that for high school graduation certificate, do we need to send our migration certificate? No. So we, that is completely different certificate. We it just depends. need about 12th class of certificate that's it migration is like i think in a, it's an indian concept they don't have yes yes thing. like yeah from transferring from one school to another school then we call it like tc also like in some school we call it tc also, transfer yeah. certificate especially for board changing we use yes so it's completely different. Okay. okay so so 12th certificate and the mark sheets of 10th 11th 12th no mark sheets of 9th or 8th or anything is required no. right only 10th, 11th, 12th. 10th, 11th, 12th. Just, just attach them and get it apostille, right? Yes. Get it apostille, all the three certificates. Yeah. And so I just want to add one point. Yes. Uh, sure. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. So apart from CBSC, there are many mm -hmm. students from state board, right? So state mm -hmm. usually state board don't have class 11th. Like they don't get the proper mark sheet. So mm -hmm. in that case, you can just attach, I think, 10th and 12th. And but the thing is that for academic transcript, you will need the average of 10th, 11th, 12th, three of them. So if you are not having 11th well, class certificate, then you have to ask your school for a proper academic transcript. Because okay. they will, because but transcript have, do includes your high school years. Okay. 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 But in the hard board, as I have seen, uh, uh -huh. students don't have class 11th as the mark right. sheet. Like they don't have anything. I was just reading the application form today, application form of GKS, and they clearly mentioned there, uh, they don't mention 11th or 12th or anything, but they mentioned like there is a uh, field where you are supposed to mention the CG, uh, GPA of like first semester, second semester and so on. So under that table, they have mentioned clearly. If, if I, I think I, it'll be better if I just uh, show here because I have the document open with me. Mm. So right here, they clearly mention where it is. Yeah, here at this point. If your academic transcript only indicates the final CGPA and does not provide GPA per semester or per year or whatever, then you may leave this table empty. So I think they don't care about like the you know exact breakup of like 10th and 11th if it is not available let's say for example in some boards they just give you 12th marks they, they don't have any separate 11th exam or anything in that case i think uh my opinion is that just your 12th uh you know grades should be okay or maybe uh you can just attach 10th and 12th obviously uh but here because they are asking clearly here that uh I think somewhere else in the document they have clearly said that they care about your last academic uh, grades. Here, I think, yeah. Cumulative CG GPA or CGPA of previous program means like 
the last degree that you completed. The last degree was 12th, I think. For graduation, it will be for GKS uh, graduate bachelor certificate, right? So you just need to mention the final bachelor's degree uh, grades here, not the, you know, 12th or 12th or anything else. I think I'm not sure I'm correct. Majayo, is it how it's supposed to work? So uh, let's say someone doesn't have like proper uh, grades, detailed grades for 11th, then what do you do? Do they combine 10th and 12th or? What oh, okay. Sorry, can I ask the question again? Like I didn't yeah, hear sure. it. Yeah, so so I am asking, uh, like for example, in many boards and many schools, they don't have any separate eleventh exam or anything. They just have twelfth, tenth, and then twelfth. So in that case, what do they do? They do they add the tenth mark sheet and twelfth mark sheet, uh, and they combine and make the average or something? And there is no need to combine. Combining, let's let's forget it. Let's there is no need of com combining or uh, making mm -hmm. average, right? They just need to add the the both. Yeah. yeah. What about the academic transcript one? Like you, did you make it through Scalar Law or any other sites? Uh, there are some sites where you need to like do convert and, and everything. What about the CGPA conversion? You did you do that, Sakshi? Anjali, yes, you did it. Conversion? No, I didn't. Nothing. Know. No, because I, our grades are already based on hundred scale. Yeah, right? but sir, that's what I'm saying. But like, sir, in state board, other than CBSE okay. board. They hmm. don't have a hundred scale. They have most common forty scale, and in that sixty percent got first division ah, marks, okay, and okay, that okay. grade is not mentioned in the GKS guidelines. So in right. that case, you need to uh, change your all subject marks on the scale row, and then take out the print on your college or university letterhead with the stamp and signature of your principal or your exam controller, and then you need to. Uh, send that document, original document, no need to apostyle that document to your the particular university or embassy. So in my case, uh, uh, the scale of my university was most common 40. So I need to change everything because in my original transcript, they only mentioned the first division, even they didn't mention about the percentage. So I need to change everything and then I uh, take the print out of that on my school college letterhead and then take out the uh, took the signature of my principal and a stamp and then i send that document so, so even so in... mm, yeah, yeah continue so uh, even uh, for bachelors many students are not from the cbse board and cbse board is only providing a hundred scale and even on scale i have checked that uh, in common scale there is a mention about the cbse scale so if you want you can choose and make if your school is going to help you so if if your mark sheet mentions percentage percentage itself means like it's out of 100 right 100. so if it mentions percentage then i think it's you don't need anything no need. You just mention like this by 100 and in the in the field and uh, no need of any you know certification from a school or anything but if it is not 100 and not 4.23 like three scales they mentioned 4.5 5 and, and one more i think yeah so they mentioned some or... grades that they they have a list for that if it is not one of those then you should go to the websites and convert your only grades. two websites are available and you should need to take uh, convert your marks on that particular website which one, which one, is it? one is a scalo and another one is w e z some Things like they have okay. mentioned clearly yes. in the guidelines. Okay, it's mentioned. Yes. Okay, yeah. then then read the guidelines and and do it accordingly. Uh -huh. Also, uh -huh. properly uh, choose your scale because many of the students they have marks on most common forty and they are choosing the ten scale and then making converting their marks. So that will be not work. Another thing common, which I I, I think not common, but I have uh, seen this question from a students that some. Are schools are completely refusing that we will not stamp this you know uh, conversion yeah. converted transcript or anything yeah. i don't know in that case what we can suggest like, <laughs> i will say my do. story yeah so my college was also refusing uh, actually my university was refusing so hmm. what i did i take out the print out of all my document and then hmm. mark the specific location where they have clearly mentioned about it that if your original transcript is not on these these, these skills then provide a additional document where you hmm. need to uh, calculate your all marks on these these, these skills from this particular website so hmm. then i show them sir these these, these things are mentioned yes. in the form as a proof yes. and then right. they are telling me okay do that show me and then i will give you so hmm. you need so to you put a little bit them, of yes. effort. 
Yes, convince them. Yes, yeah, you have yeah. to convince them. Yeah, but but if, yeah, Shalanesh, you want to add something? Yeah, actually, I don't know if you all know. We both are sisters. Uh, I H actually. I know at least. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. So yeah, we had the same university. So mm. at least uh, uh, we have gone to our university at uh, almost twenty times. We used to travel oh. at six a.m. and then. Uh, We, we come back home at ten a.m. Yeah, ten oh, a.m. Oh. It's like ten a.m. So did you like proper care? Not that I didn't have to go to school. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, and we, we have so many packs packed for them because, ah, inka to, like my dad's, inka to like the original transcript or certificate was also got because I passed in twenty twenty three. So I didn't pass anything. I didn't have a written transcript and I didn't have an original certificate. I didn't have anything. And I have to apply this year. I had to think. Hmm. एक सबसे बड़ी बात है ना आप अप्लाई करने से पहले ही अपने दिमाग में ये चीज डाल लो होगा hmm. नहीं होगा नहीं पता बस करो जो होगा right. मत hmm. yes. so, so, so तो कि like, totally uh, yeah. uh, है instead of yeah. just giving up and not applying i would say that still uh, just try to fill all the things and i think th- it's better to apply than than just give giving yeah. giving up that is my opinion and make sure that you are know. filling correctly not randomly yes. even last year when last yeah. year when i was applying for donkuk university at that time i didn't got selected because at that especially the particular point of this uh, information on academic transcript grade this mm-hmm. table is very much confusing at that time for me and uh, by mistake i did the mistake in this table and that time my rejection happened so at least uh, try to fill out also, the form clearly yes also one more thing sometimes if you go to the admin department of university college those people are a little bit not very helpful actually so maybe try to contact your teachers go to your professor teacher and maybe request them if they request the admin maybe they'll be able to help they will be a little bit more you know uh, uh, inclined to help so um, maybe that can help maybe request your parents like do whatever it is needed to convince them that it, my life depends on this thing so so please uh, you just have to put a stamp yeah yeah yes shrutma she wanted to add something yes, okay yeah. uh, um, so i basically wanted to add on 2000 uh, like wanted to apply for the scholarship on 2023 as well but um, i graduated on 2022 when my university was refusing to hmm. give me graduation certificate uh, maybe by two years so okay. they i literally wrote i don't know maybe uh, 20 to 30 letters and i used to visit them continuously but there was no reply and uh, oh. the irony was 2023 graduates got their um, certificate but we 2022 graduates didn't because there was some uh, political issues and something going on oh. with our university mm-hmm. so whenever i visit someone they say um, sorry it's out of our hand we cannot do anything it's a big matter now uh, we cannot do anything so uh, i i think the last thing i could do was like uh, just before like one month before application because i didn't want to give up this year as well because i couldn't apply on 2023 and now this 2024 so i actually went uh, to the vc's office in our university yes. and we Very were not nice. allowed to we were not allowed to visit vc uh, as a student in our university so mm. i waited there for 8 hours constantly mm-hmm. like i i won't move if you do not let me meet her so i just went there and um, before that i already wrote lots of letters to our controller ma'am but uh, she kind of ignored every time so when i visited vc ma'am so sh- she for the first time that was the only positive person who said okay so you cannot apply with provisional certificate and i said no i cannot last year this is how i couldn't so she said i am not aware of it like you should have written some letters to me and like i did ma'am like i all have all the received copies like 20 to 30 letters you can see and she was like okay this matter was not reaching me you were writing the letter to the controller but she was not forwarding me mm-hmm. the letters so that was the i think the final thing i could do and within one month i could get my certificate and finally i could apply this year so i think yes. you have to 
go everywhere wherever it takes you like yes, no matter whatever company. whomever you can visit just do it even in my Whatever university a uh, few yeah. professor or few in charge they suggest me just write down a letter and attach all the document highlight them with the proof and just send to the, your vc then your work will be done and definitely mm -hmm. that thing happen so you oh, have to approach all the authorities higher authorities and you have authority. to show them if you just tell them that i need it they will not believe you have to just attach everything see they are asking this thing it's right there with, add with the embassy notification everything else whatever that authenticates that requirement i think um, that will help you Ashalani, she wanted to add something things, yeah but these things take time okay so if you're starting yeah, so if you're starting now yeah it's yeah no, no, it's, it's it it's becomes horrible. super hectic because we know uh, for till one month we went uh, from uh, from our house six a.m. and till uh, five hour journey and then we mm. reached to university whole day we are just standing there to at least in a hope that today we will receive our document and they say no you will not get yeah. your document today and then ten p.m. we arrived our home. So continuously till 20 days per day gap, we are just going. And I think more, uh, I think for preparing whatever money is, I have spent on this, on this same amount of money I have just expend, spend on my journey yeah. from my home to university. So is, yeah. if, if you are trying or want, then for yeah. master, mm -hmm. start your journey from right now. Got it. Yeah. So, so if you're going planning for a graduate scholarship, start from now, start collecting all the, so because we are on that topic, collect documents from now. So let's say someone gets their letter of recommendation right now, a few months in advance. How is there any validity period for a recommendation uh, later? Within on? one year, within one year. Is it the same for UG, uh, Angelish? One year. And what about the validity of this apostyle thing, like if they get it done one uh, year. If, uh, if, no, uh, if uh, I have talked to the agency and they told me that if we put that true copy stamp, then its validity mm. is only for six months. Six and months. In the, yes, in that true stamp, it is clearly mentioned valid for six months. I don't have my document right now, but uh, when okay. they did my apostyle and true copy, they put the true copy stamp on that my document, then they're clearly mentioned that only for six months. Okay, so uh, so the apostyle should be done within six months. It shouldn't be uh, an apostyle. Okay, because we are on apostyle. It will took only one week. Okay, so uh, apostyle thing, uh, you because you get apostyle on the original one, original no, document, no, or no, a no, photocopy no. one. Uh, we we did the that. scan copy of our document through the printer, color scan mm -hmm. copy of back and front and. We write uh, the name of everything and just send to uh, on their WhatsApp number on to the apostyle agency. They took the hard copy on bond paper or a size paper. Then they uh, do the apostyle and that apostyle document we send particular university or embassy. And uh, yeah. and the embassy like if they want three copies, then you just then, the uh, one original or two photocopy. One or just photocopy. No three. need to notarize or anything. No, 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 no need to no notarize. Need to notarize. Anjali, it's the same for the undergraduate. You just yeah, uh, it's same for the undergraduate. You just need to copy. yeah. Mm -hmm. You just need to like like people always ask me like, do we need to apostel the original document? And I goes like, don't apostel your original document because, because you then you have it. to send your original document. Like okay. or apostel is to make a document official, and your original document is already original already official. and official. Yeah. So you don't mm -hmm. need to do that. So you just need to scan like scan the that a document and send it to the postal agency, and then they will took out like the hard copy and a postal, and then send it to you. And mm -hmm. for embassy track, you just need to photocopy every of them, the three sets. Yes. That's it. Got it. So so we are done with the apostyle thing. I think mm, I think that is covered. Then certificate thing and the transcript thing. Okay, apart from that, Anjali, you can continue. Yeah, and, and then yeah. the rest of you can, you know, interrupt if there is anything to add. Yeah. So I think that I am already explained the graduation certificates and all. And there is a question related to expected graduation certificate. Provisional or expected, yeah. Yeah, for but I will suggest because as an Indian scholar, Indian student who is in twelfth class, mm -hmm. mostly our result comes in June, right? Like June, yes. July. 
if you're mm -hmm. giving a 12th class block board results okay mm -hmm. so but you have if you are applying this year then you have to submit your original document 12th class certificate by december something mm -hmm. so you don't have to not... december yeah so you will mm -hmm. not have your document till then so now what are you supposed to submit so your scholarship okay. will already be cancelled so don't apply if you are in 12th right now you can't apply for it first okay. you get your certificate then apply for it okay so expected graduate certificate i don't think that is for us like as hmm. an undergraduate for okay. undergraduate it will not work yeah, yeah. What and... about the graduate one? Let me let's get this topic, you know, uh, clear. Uh, like, uh, are they allowing this provisional certificate? Uh, right? Provisional certificate last year they are not allow allowing, but maybe this year also they are not allowing. But they allow the expected graduation. Right? Exactly. Yes, keep changing. Maybe yeah. this time for UG guidelines they have mentioned that if you are applying through provisional uh, certificate, we. Yeah. Uh, we recognize it as an expected graduation certificate. Exactly. And the, this year for master, they are just giving deadline till 31st of July 2024. You need to send your original document. Otherwise, even if we select you and if you are failure to give us, then we will consider your Cancel. policy. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. So, and the end, you um, need to send your original document, original certificate. Mm. Yeah, I mean, some of the universities like Hanyang and STKU, so some of them replied and they some of them said no we we won't accept the original uh sorry the provisional certificate and some of them said yes but yeah you shouldn't take any chance so yes so it depends on university but yeah but you shouldn't take a chance uh, try to get the original certificate if you have passed like the completed the degree mm, for 12th obviously it doesn't matter like you have to have the certificate Mm, and you will be having certificate, right? If you are still in 12th, no need to waste time and energy. Apply to prepare for the next year. Okay, let's continue. And other documents are not for you, like overseas Korean, Ukraine wars, that's not for us. And then we have some additional documents. So if I'm saying additional documents, then that means that you don't need to apostile these documents. I'm going to say some names and you don't need to apostile it. I'm clearly mentioning because we have topic result which hmm. is not mandatory first of all it's not like you should have topic then you can apply for it even if right. you don't have it they're going we are going to have a one year like korean language training program so you can learn korean there so you don't need to worry about it okay so to topic or if you are learning like ielts or toic whatever it is so you don't you can just if you have that document you can apply with it but if you don't have it it's okay okay and you don't need to apostle it. And then we have some other certificates and awards, which is related to mostly like if you are in undergraduate. So mostly like we have something related to our school, debates, competitions, high school, like these kinds of things. So you can just apply with it, but you don't need to apostle these documents also. Okay. Last thing we have passport copy. So if you are applying with your birth certificate and you have already proved your citizenship like perfectly, but even if you have a passport copy, you can apply it. Like you can just like, okay, additional document. It will be helpful. Okay. And if you don't have it, then don't worry. You don't need it. Mandate. It's not like mandatory to have that passport copy or something. So don't worry about it. And you don't need to apostle these documents. Hope that helps. So, so you have to apostle basically three things. Number yeah. one, your graduation certificate or whatever it is 12th graduation or 12th or bachelor's degree or whatever you're applying your certificate should be apostyle and yes. your that transcript or mark sheet thing should be apostyle and if you are submitting voter id it should be apostyle i think that is the only thing that you need to apostyle you don't need to send any other document aadhar pan or no. you know, driving license these things will not work and a uh, passport it doesn't need to be apostyle passport is like a valid document provided by the government so so it's not no need to apostyle those all your you know extracurricular activities and other certifications just submit photocopies no need to apostyle or anything notarize or anything okay so i think that is all about documentation um process any extra uh steps for uh, uh graduate yeah, one i, I, have, yeah, I yeah. just want to add something like yes. if your document is in just hindi then mm -hmm. you need to translate it in english okay not Completely like you are not... or any other regional language if it is there yeah. then you have to translate then in you english. have to translate it in english and it's not like you are the one who is going to translate it you there mm -hmm. are companies and you just have to like send your documents to them then they will translate it and they have some valid stamps for that certification also. copy certified yeah copy okay and if your document is in hindi or any other regional university and also in english 
like hindi and then english hindi then english, english then you don't need to translate it right like it, it, it's already like okay there is hindi but there is english also so you don't need to you translate read it yes yeah. and they also you also need to like get it like a uh, consular uh, stamp or something because i think no. they mentioned something no just certified translation the, copy is enough yes oh, okay okay I have one more thing to add. Uh, so mm -hmm. in few universities, they have their language requirements. Like this year, I have noticed that uh, for the major art and technology, Sogang University had their requirement of topic level three while applying. I was very shocked by that because we are going to have one year language program. So right. while applying, getting this. Uh, but the irony is I got topic level four during April. But I couldn't mm -hmm. approve it because I didn't have it on February. So, yeah, be prepared for that. Every university might have their own requirement in a particular major, like might have any top fill or IELTS requirement. Like it's yes. not very common, but it might be there. So, like study the previous year guys guidelines to get some idea about it. Yes. So, so yeah, definitely. Like there are some universities and there are some majors for which they can ask you any topic this level, even though it's not a requirement by NIIED. Uh, they don't need for GKS, but the university can have their own requirements. So just check if you're applying through university track, check the particular universities, you know, notice properly and you have to follow that. Mm, yes. But for topic certificate, TOEFL certificate, those things also you don't need to apostate or anything. Just, you know, to clarify and those are not mandatory obviously you will add them you will get some extra points but uh, those are not mandatory things mm. okay yeah i just want to add one point sir mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. i think class 11 year 12 mother or father name galat hoga and ye mm -hmm. bohut, i i mean ye bohut okay. zada common mistake hai jo ki india mein hoti hai मदर या फादर देन में गलती तो इसके लिए आपका पूरा एक प्रोसेस होता है लाइक गैजेट बनवाना सो यू कैन गो ऑन यूट्यूब एंड यू कैन सर्च दैट प्रोसेस सो अगर आपका लाइक स्पेशली फॉर लाइक द यूजी तो अगर आपका नाम गलत है तो आप वो गैजेट बनवा के उसको एपोस्टाइल करवा लें ताकि आपको फ्यूचर में आई मीन नाम वगैरह में कोई दिक्कत ना हो Okay, 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 okay. Mm. Galat kis chiz mein? Just document, because the document. Uh, yeah, like document. like twelve certificate mark sheet mein papa ka naam galat hai, ah, okay. mother ka naam galat hai. Yes. Mm. So you need to get some documentation for that. Yeah. Mm. I think if you go to a local court area, I think the uh, there are people there will That's help not you. Right? Acceptable. No, no, no. affidavit is not acceptable. So, so how is it done? Like how is it done then? This. It's like uh, there is a gadget. Like mm -hmm. a newspaper gadget. Uh, ah, okay. And so there's typical process yeah. of like you need to publish an ad or something. Yeah, yeah. Right? Ad or something. Mm -hmm. Yes, you need to publish the correct name in the newspaper. There are agencies also who help in this, so you can give the money uh, mm -hmm. to the agencies and they will do this process. Or you can do yourself also. Just do some research and then mm -hmm. yes. So it's very important. Like for UG people, it's very important because us graduations, we yeah. uh, we don't need uh, like 11 and 12th mark sheet. We just need the graduation one. So yeah, okay. it's very important for you all. Thank you. Got it. Now let's come to the recommendation letter part. Recommendation letter, uh, we need to... It, it, it Some people are saying that do we have to get recommendation and we have to attach with the form or something? No, you have to get it in a sealed envelope, right? The, the the person who is writing the recommendation, they are supposed to sign it and put it in an envelope and then seal it and put their sign across the you know flap, right? And then it then only it will be accepted. And you don't need to get like four copies of recommendation later. You just the recommender can just write three photocopies of the same letter, right? Isn't it uh, Angelishi or uh, yeah. And it should be in the one envelope only. Yeah. Like uh, what I did was uh, like your recommendation letter should be in an envelope, right? And seal mm -hmm. pack. Like you can't open it. Okay. So just take that envelope and we have that. I think that is form number four recommendation letter, right? Yes. So mm -hmm. take that form and there are some details that you have to fill in. Like who is the recommender and right. where is it from? Like these things. Fill that form and just attach two things together. So they will get to know, okay, and and for that envelope also mention on that envelope that recommendation letter. That's it. Mm -hmm. So you, can so you are supposed to 
give this thing the form already filled into the recommender right so that they don't have to spend time right some like recommend- for me mm-hmm. my sir was like he write all the recommendation letter on a completely different page okay. and then he yeah. attach it to the main form yeah then i attach yeah. it to the main form yeah, yeah, and I asked him to yeah. do like before, like you have to mention that to your teacher or whoever writing your recommendation letter that he should or she should make three photocopies of that before sealing that recommendation letter. Yeah, yeah. make sure if you're applying through embassy track, make sure to mention this that yeah. they need to make three copies and also sign that and put that in the same envelope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, if you're applying for university, then I think one copy is enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for recommendation, sure yeah, yeah. And make sure that your professor has put a full date, year, month, and yes. day. Because many of yeah. professor or teacher they just sign, they don't mention the date, even date on your right. recommendation letter and the yes. back flap where they sealed it. There they need to mention the there there they need to do their signature with the full date. Yeah. If they, so they uh, have clearly given all this information on the recommendation in the form. guidelines. It's your job to, you know, tell your recommender because yes. they might not, they might forget it. So you, it's your job to point it that, sir or madam, you have to do it like this. You have to put the date and you have to sign it. Okay. So don't uh, depend. Okay. They are uh, teachers. So they must be knowing it, how to do it. Well, I mean, just explain to, uh, you can go yes. uh, Because it's clearly mentioned in the guidelines. If date is not mentioned, we will not accept your re- recommendation later. That is not going to valid. So there will be rejection. Hmm. Yes, Anjali, you were saying something. I'm, I was just saying that if someone who is a, like a, going to apply for undergraduate or planning to do that, so make sure you are having a good connection with your teachers and your principals. Don't really? fight with them, please. Yes. <laughs> because sure at the end, them. they are the one. Because for me, I didn't have any kind of problem like asking for documents or recommendation letter mm-hmm. because I was having like a good connection with my principals and all. Like, I like. A recommendation letter should be shield packed and everything but they were asking me this, uh, like they were like should we write this should we write that and do we need so right. i think that if you're having a good connection with your teachers then they will help you out with that yes, yes, if you yes, are like yes. already rebelling in your class so it will mm-hmm. be drawback for you right 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 so it's very very important yeah if you have a good rapport with yeah. your teachers yeah they might like write everything or they might just ask you like in my case my professor yes. like, do you write yourself, write yourself, and then just bring it to me. I will Mine, my, in my, my case, then. My, in my case, I did that because my principal goes like, he was like, I know that you are a good kid. And he was more concerned about my safety in Korea. He was like, are you yeah. sure that GK scholarship is not a scam? And I was like, no, it's not a scam. <laughs> and are you sure that you are not like messing your future? And I was like, I'm not messing my future. So he was like, okay, you write whatever you want. I will mm-hmm. see it. I will sign it. And I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. So I was going to think, I did write something bad about, I have, like I don't know if I'm selfish or what I was not not able to find a bad point about me so I was like what I'm supposed to do so I was trying to do and my teacher checks it and he signs it and, like it was not completely sealed recommendation letter for sure yeah, yeah. everyone some knows about teachers it are very very open but some teachers might not be that cooperative what to do in that yeah. case like let's say some students are like the teacher is totally refusing I will not write recommendation then you did something to the teacher. Why are they not giving it to you? Find, try to find at least one teacher who can. Who can yeah, at least to one you. teacher should be in your favor. Yeah. Like just beg or whatever you have to do. Someone. Yeah, like mm-hmm. I think that if you are doing well in your education, mostly Indian teachers will like you. Correctly, and you yeah. can't get it from like uh, your coaching center or teaching no. center or computer center or anything. It has no. to be a regular teacher who ha- who knows you like properly, who has teach- taught you for over a period of time and they yeah. can judge your character, your compatibility, your you know competence and everything. So it has to be from a regular teacher. Some people ask like, can we get it from, for particularly for graduate scholarship? Can we get it from, if I'm doing internship somewhere or if I'm working somewhere, can I get it from a manager or from my boss? I think for some majors, it might be acceptable. For example, for example, if you are applying for a business major major and you have been like working under uh, with a company for some time, I think the ma- recommendation of that manager there, it can matter a little bit, maybe more than even the teacher's recommendation because your business competence is also important. But for most of the majors, they expect a teacher's recommendation, professor's recommendation, not recommendation from your boss or, you know, your employer or anyone so uh, that is also 
For example, let's say you are applying for biotech and let's say you have already been working working with like a medical firm or a, under a bio, you know, technology lab or something. The director of that lab, I think their recommendation can matter because they are also yeah. like, they are not professor, but they are an expert in that area or academics. So in those uh, situations, it may matter. But in most of the situations, you should reach out to your, you know, former teachers or professors and request them to write one for you yeah you can add work experience as an extra certificate yes that yeah. is that so is. i was working in an ngo so mm -hmm. i had uh, i added that extra certificate as a work mm -hmm. experience and also don't add more than one recommendation letter okay people mm -hmm. ask that can we add two recommendation yeah, two letters? Or three or four yeah, yeah. no yeah no yeah because that's like taking chances I will submit four, so at least one of them must be writing good things about me. But if so, so, so they will not accept that. Okay, so uh, they, you just have to take your chance with one person, and you have to pray that that person is written good things about you. So yeah, that is about recommendation. Also, uh, a very simple question: Universe, what is the deadline for university track? Deadline will differ like university to university, right? So you have to check the university website. Every university will have a different deadline. They may have a different deadline. So, so check the university websites, read it properly. Um, and there are some very, very general, very, very common questions uh, that people have asked. Um, for example, which track is better? Or which program is better? Which university is better? no one can answer those questions no, like no. it's 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 impossible no if you ask anyone they will say like we don't know which track is better maybe someone got selected through embassy track but maybe they were lucky like so so we don't know which track is better okay you have to take your own chances and sim similarly about university all the universities in korea are good actually so 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 what whoever is having an affiliation with niied those are not, you know, some, some shady university or anything. They are all reputed universities. So you can't go wrong with any university uh, from that list. They are all pretty, uh, you know, good universities. So just choose, one, just go to their website, see, you know, you can get some idea from the website, right? Maybe go to your, in the university, they also have a separate page for all the departments. So go to your department's website, check the profile of teachers and everything. And then you can take your decision. Uh, but all the universities are good. For major only, you have to choose like which major suits you, which major is good, like and job opportunities and other things. No one can predict these things, right? So you may choose like the top university in Korea and you can, you can do the top major, but still you may be unemployed, right? It, it's possible. And someone can choose like a very, very small university and very, very unpopular major, but still that person can be very, very successful, you know in some field. So these things, I don't think you should waste your energy and time worrying about these things. Whatever subject like interests you, you, you find that subject interesting, choose any good university and just uh, apply for that. Mm. Up, and many people like obviously their parents like Anjali uh, said that her teacher was worried. Many people's parents are worried Korea may like, is it safe? Uh, uh, is vegetarian food available or such things if if you get sick what will happen so uh, I don't think you need to worry about those things I think uh, how do you feel I like, think uh, you need to worry Pachira. about it you... yeah Anjali you have yeah, lived, lived think... for some time so yeah like when I, when I came to Korea I was also like a, just a 19 year old kid in like for my parents they were like how are you supposed to live there how are you supposed right. to manage all things but i think that if you know how to like like this like you don't you should know the situations where are you in exactly. mm. like if you like no country is 100 percent safe exactly there is nothing so if you are going out like if you are thinking that okay if you like we have that sixth sense if you're going somewhere you know that it might have not keep your eyes open you should, and you should know yeah. have like so awareness of like what's happening around you. Mm. yeah so like you have to take care of yourself like if you are thinking about worrying like if they are like unsafe or something nothing no country is safe even in india people are not safe even in korea people are not safe so you have to like aake khol ke chalo bahar chal rahe ho to dekh ke chalo agar 
आपको लेना पड़ेगा yeah. राइट So just go mm. for it. And for vegetarian, I am a pure vegetarian, and I don't think that because of food or something, I'm having a hard time. Mm. Yeah. All the vegetables because, are available. Yeah, and, once uh, once you are in your dream country, you manage on your own. Like at yeah. least I did something, so I'm managing on my own. Okay, it's it might maybe in the start it was quite difficult, but then okay, I get used to it. Okay, I can do this. Like like I just find that rather like okay, I will go for it, and I can choose that. So you can just like choose and make your decision. So it's kind of good. You don't need to worry about that. Yes. What about um, others? Then, like, are you feeling okay? Yeah. 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 Nothing to worry yeah, about. So, so I'm just asking because other people can show these recordings to their parents. Yeah. Just, just just listen to the girls. Yeah. They are there. So so. so mm-hmm. First of all, there is no such thing as K drama happening in your okay. life. Okay. K drama is yeah. okay. Okay. That's disappointing yeah, for many yeah, people. Yeah, I'm sure. Like, या mm-hmm. आपको यहाँ पे आके पढ़ना पड़ेगा ये इंडिया जैसा नहीं चलेगा कि जैसे तैसे पास हो जाए ऐसा ah. कुछ नहीं होता यहाँ पे इवन वी आर वी हैव स्टडीड कोरियन देन स्टिल आई एम फेसिंग इश्यूज लाइक या समटाइम्स दे स्पीक सो फास्ट सो आई एम लाइक ओके ओके व्हाट इज हैपनिंग एंड इट इज वेरी सेफ we have just landed 20 days back and we went on a trip also to pohang so it's very safe people uh, people are well, uh, very helping and mm-hmm. one more thing about uh, food so yeah maine apna jo food hai wo parcel kiya tha and wo customs mein first gaya and they send a form and it was like everything in korean and i was like oh my god i don't have a sim i don't have phone number ab main kya karu so meri jo yahan pe teacher thi sonsanim she was so good so good उन्होंने मेरी पूरी हेल्प की उस फॉर्म को भरने में हमारा जो आ, मतलब आ, हमारा ब्रेक होता है दस मिनट का उसमें उन्होंने पूरा फॉर्म को फिल किया सब चीज किया उन्होंने अपना नंबर दिया एंड देन वो दो दिन के अंदर वो कस्टम क्लियर हो गया एंड पार्सल मेरे पास आ गया तो अगर hmm. कुछ भी दिक्कत होती है तो आप अपने टीचर से हेल्प करो बिकॉज ये किसी भी हद तक जाके आपको हेल्प करेंगे वेरी गुड इवन इवन द पीपल ऑन द स्ट्रीट द स्टूडेंट्स एवरीबडी इज गुड या आपको स्टार्टिंग में अगर आपको लैंग्वेज नहीं आती है तो आपको थोड़ी सी प्रॉब्लम हो सकती है बट स्टिल एवरीबॉडी कैन मैनेज या ओके एनीथिंग एनीथिंग एल्स टू ऐड हियर द थिंग्स आर मोर कन्वीनिएंट हियर आई विल जस्ट ऐड द थिंग्स बिकॉज़ इन माय यूनिवर्सिटी दे आर नॉट प्रोवाइडिंग किचन देयर इज कैफेटेरिया वेयर यू नीड टू गो एंड परचेस द फूड एंड इन माय केस particular day of the week i am not going to eat the um, meat uh, so at that day i need to manage so i learn how to cook in the microwave they are just giving us microwave so in that case you need to learn how to uh, manage uh, your life here so you need to manage once you come here you will manage everything that's the clear thing yeah okay yeah. i will add one more thing uh-huh. yeah 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 uh, uh, like you can go first Hmm. yeah even if i have kitchen also sometimes like when uh, my classes are from 1:30 to uh, 6 so it's late uh, like i have 20 minutes walk from the kli to my in dorm so it's like i am so tired i can't make my food <laughs> so i eat ramen so yeah it's like this you eat maggi in yes. india you eat ramen hmm. in south korea that's it <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> i'm yeah. i'm getting parcels from my mother every month even the like the people in the dormitory gets to know like if there is a parcel from india they goes like okay it's belongs to that indian girl that Inj- anjali anjali mm-hmm. and I, i got a phone call like they just see the name like okay this person is from india okay let's call anjali because it's it's her own mom like sometimes my mother sent too much like even the people like was like what are your mother sending from india and i was like even i don't know i have to check it <laughs> what is she sending from india so you have you just manage like when i first came to korea i was a, like a pure vegetarian like i don't even eat egg so it was mm-hmm. quite difficult from the starting but i think i managed from because of my parents like they were helping me from there mm-hmm. and even i have some like indian friends here also they were really helping and mm-hmm. the, like if like it will be really shocking but my koreans and even my foreigner friends they were mm-hmm. really helping also like they get to know okay there is a vegetarian people and she can't eat anything so they were Correct. really helpful like every time they are finding some vegetarian dish for me and sending me some random coupon like messages like you can buy this you can eat this so they are really helpful you just need to come here and the thing is that i think that the day you are submitting your gks form you have to be prepared for lots of things 
because i am living here for one and half years and trust me i have lo- filled lots of forms lots of documents mm-hmm. lots of things that i'm doing on my own which i never did in, in india like i was like okay my brother is there my family is there but now i have to take care of all the things on my own so j- like gks is not like okay you can just go and study no you have to manage lots of things on your own you can't ask anyone for help like okay help me they can help you but you don't they don't know about like what, even they don't know about the documents also you have to figure it out on yourself so be prepared for it don't think that we are coming to some k drama world this is not k drama and we have to manage on our own so the people who are thinking like i i really feel something like really bad for the people like they're just 18 19 they think that i like k drama some ceo ceo will be there to help you no mm-hmm. there is no ceo we are helping right. ourselves please right and we are not mm-hmm. meeting bts every morning please <laughs> don't think like that make sure that Got you it. have that determination to apply for gks and also you have that ambitions so that you can go on for four years or five years it will be a long time so make your mind okay don't just like randomly apply for gks and say like, okay let's go to korea it will be hard okay thank you for this pointers let me just uh, uh, there is one question uh, in the excel sheet that someone asked like uh, that i'm not sure if uh, there is a lot of like in the 10th cbsc there are five subjects but uh, like do you have to add like the top five and yeah what is what is the confusion yes. top five like top um, mm-hmm. mostly in cbsc i don't know about the other boards but cbsc boards we have six subjects total mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. mostly we pull, we just count five subjects top five okay one subject is always additional and even the right. additional subject has the like the in the mark sheet also it has star in it that means it's okay. additional so, so you were supposed to add that to in transcript or not like for me uh i just use my top 6 because even though i'm using my top 6 i was still having the marks above 90% so i was like why would i like make them like i think that maybe they don't know about this process like this is just an indian thing that additional subject is there and you can't add that. so i was just thinking but i think that if your marks is already 90 or 85 plus even if you are counting your top 6 then go for it and if you think that just top 5 is going to be 80% then you can go for it but i don't think that everyone is going to understand what that mean because mm-hmm. in korea they don't have any additional subjects right. and you can count their marks on it so it might be difficult this, for yeah. Be, yeah embassy track i think people can understand for in university track it might be difficult Mm-hmm. So, so just just leave that out i would say that yes. don't get more confusion some people are also like they have asked like for example let's say i have done one years of ba from some university already should i mention that or let's say i am applying for graduate but i have already uh, done masters somewhere else should i mention that or the scores of that degree matter or not i would say that don't complicate don't, don't over complicate yeah. it just mention your last eligibility degree so for example if you are applying for graduate then your last bachelor's degree will be seen they will they will consider that what your grade is in 12th or in your masters or phd they don't that they don't care about that similarly for undergraduate your last 12th score is what matters yeah. your ba first year or second year it doesn't matter if you are doing bachelor's already it's fine you can apply but if you already have got a bachelor's degree completed then i think you cannot apply you are not eligible to apply yes right if you already have a bachelor yes, degree but in the case of graduate you can apply even if you have already a masters degree yeah. still you can apply for gks graduate there is no such restriction um yeah um, yeah that's it now coming to uh, i think a very important point and i will i want to give some time to that uh, topic uh what would be your you know best tips on sop writing sop or writing personal statement or for anything else the, the, the best tips that you would like to give to someone let me start with shrit mash shrit mash like any tips how to write i believe SOP? i believe being truthful and um, making it very interesting is the best thing you can do because you have been working very hard for preparing Uh, this for the scholarship right so you must have a really good story to tell all of your certificates said something for you says like it, if it's language certificate if it's your extracurricular if it's ngo everything has a story to tell 
So mm-hmm. you got to make it interesting. You got to make them know that you have been working for it. And about the major, you have to show interest. Like why that major? Why in that particular city you are willing to apply? You have to ask. You want to apply to that particular university out of other universities available there. Why that major? What you can offer to that major? And what makes you more interested about this? You have to be very specific. You cannot copy and say, because I love culture. I love this thing. Because everyone is going to write that. What makes you different? You have to know that first yourself. When Once you're clear about it, once you know what you are intending to do, I think things will be much more clear. You can be very specific and very. you can write it in detail. And at this point, it won't be difficult to write a very interesting SOP. I think I focused in these things mostly. Okay, would you uh, have any recommendation for the about the length of the person statement or SOP? Should it be like, because they, I think they have the maximum limit that it should be two page for personal statement and three pages for SOP. So do you think we should use it all like to fill two pages or do you want it to be short and crisp? Or is there no such formula or anything? Anything that you want to say? Uh, I, I personally tried uh, to fill it as much as possible but again uh, i didn't want to make it uh, boring so i uh, for uh, sop i my sop was one uh, half page or mostly like two pages and for the uh, other document it was like not three pages it was like around two and a half two and a half pages because i wanted them to know because I have lots lot of things to say about me. I didn't want to keep it blank. But then mm-hmm. again, I didn't want to lend, make it lengthy unnecessarily. So I think okay. it's better to write about you as much as you can, but don't make it boring. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you, Shritana. Uh, next, uh, Sakshi, maybe you can share the same top question to you. Oh, actually, I want to say that on the form page, they have mentioned four points. Try to write down your SOP according to those four points and try to write down so that they can got interested in your SOP as they they were reading. Uh, At least try to write down your SOP in a story so that they can understand. And last time what I have done mistake that I have just written, I have this award, I have this award, I have this, that, that. But the thing after reading, I got bored. So... Obviously, the person in front of me, they will definitely got bored. So if you are applying for a particular university and for a particular course, then that means that particular university has something special in particular course. So search on their website and find out if their professor do some kind of research and did you like that research. So try to mention that even if you are... Uh, try, uh, even if you are telling about your awards, try to mention that what you have learned from that particular skill or uh, particular certificate courses so that that understand, okay, this child have this much knowledge. Even if you are attaching your computer certificate, then try to uh, write them the reason behind it that after learning how much my life was easier. And just make sure that you are giving everything with the reason. Right. Makes sense. Thank you, Sakshi. Anjali, what would be your tips? Okay, so I was trying to remember all the things that I've read in my personal statement of study plan. Mm-hmm. So I will just advise you two or three things. First thing that you have to make sure that you are writing the truth. Because the thing is that even if you get selected in the interview, they are going to ask the same question that you have like, written about you in your study plan or in your personal statement so when Mm -hmm. while you're nervous maybe you will be like okay confused because you didn't write the truth so if you are like saying the truth you are are not going to be confused about it so they will because they are not stupid they are doing that for a long time so they can understand if you're writing if you're saying lie or you are saying the truth so make sure that you are writing the truth and mostly uh be specific about your major which is really, really important because sometimes we are talking about our education background and that we have done this, we have done that, and we forgot to mention our major that we are intending to do. And mostly for undergraduate, I will suggest that it's not like after completing your 12th, you have done lots of things, okay? You don't right. have that much things. You don't even have time for it. So for that, you can just mention little things about your 
achievements and certificates that you have done even though it is not related to your major like not that it's not like completely opposite but even though it's not that much related to your major but you can still mention about it you can just show yourself like like active worker and you are really like a multitasker so you can show that side of yours and also i will suggest that even if you are writing your study plan or you are writing your personal statement take time at least take one month for it it's not like you can write you will write a perfect study plan or personal statement in just one week or in just one day or two days or something it will take lot of time first you have to write all the things then you have to like select okay maybe this part is main maybe this part is good okay we can add it so you have to take your time just don't go for like okay seven days and we are done even i was like writing a personal statement for maybe more than one month and i used to read it again and again again and again because i used to think that maybe it will be quite not because they got lots of forms okay they have lots of applicants for it so they they are reading that personal statement of everyone and if you are writing the same thing they're not going to read it they are just going to read the three or four of one paragraph and be like okay it's the same thing so they are not going to so you have to make it interesting in the first paragraph just don't go for like simply okay this is me and we are supposed and don't write your personal like that family things like this is my brother he do that and we are doing this so you don't need it they don't need that much information of yours they just want to know about something specific about you and i will suggest that if you check the personal statement and study plan there are some points that they already mentioned that okay this is the questions and you should answer these questions so for undergraduate people i will just suggest you just answer these questions and your personal statement will be perfect you don't need to add all the things they are there i like even if you are not reading that points and you start learning writing your personal statement you somehow going to mention that so why not just go for their topic or their form okay let's go mm -hmm. for their context so it will be really easy for undergraduate if you are writing based on their context and for study plan it says that you need three pages but i think that i did write for two pages because three pages i think that it's too long and it will be too lengthy and i don't think that no one is, someone is going to know about like what i'm going to study okay because as a undergraduate i don't know what my major holds i don't know what the subject is i just completed my 12th how am i supposed to write about my major in detail so okay for graduate they know about their major they know okay they are going to post graduate in this for undergraduate i didn't know that so i just mentioned like a small paragraph like maybe one or two paragraphs that's it and for language study plan also if you are learning korean just mention that even if you don't have a topic you can still mention that you are learning korean it's really important because you will, at the end you are getting the scholarship from korea side so you have to show them that you are interested in their culture you are interested in their language you are willing to come there and also you have to show their personal your personal like a like a strong personality who is not going to give up because the thing is that for undergraduate like 19 and people like who just completed their school they come so they like doubt your personality what if you just give up suddenly and be like okay you don't you don't want to be like continue so you have to show your like a really strong personality that you are not going to give up so for undergraduate i think these things will enough you don't need to and people goes like we don't know what about our major i don't know about my subject you will even i didn't know that and mm. for your major you can just go on google search about it what your mm. major teaches about and what is the like interest in it so even if you don't know we have google you can ask that and you can mention that so it will be easy i think but take okay. your time for this thing take your time great and at last shalini sir you have anything to add yes everybody has included all the points but i want to add uh, the main thing that is don't change your major unnecessarily like mm. some of the students ask this question from me uh, i am a engineer student and can i uh, can i do masters in history i don't think uh, this makes any sense like i know that uh, we can have choices at any point of our life but mm. changing major is like going from science to like arts it's mm. like it will be very difficult for uh, for especially for masters to uh, you know write everything and then get selected so don't change your major, uh, major unnecessarily yes. so so i think a lot of great points all of you have included uh, a few things i would like to maybe add or summarize just what you said 
Uh, first of all, I also got this question from uh, a few students. He, for the embassy track, they ask us to apply to three universities. So can we choose three different departments, three different majors? Technically, you can do. They, have, they don't have any restrictions. You can't do that. But it will be totally, you know, I think, senseless to do that. Because you are kind of making your own application very, very negative. That I don't know what I have to study. I also want to apply for history. I want to apply for movies, cin cinema. And I also want to apply for biotechnology. So it shows that you don't have any directions. So though there is no restriction, but I don't think they will select you know, a student who has applied to three different departments. And also, how are you going to write your SOP? You are going to write out these three things that if I get selected for history, I'll be very happy. But if not, I can also study biotechnology. If that is also not possible, then I would like to study this. It will be very, very difficult to write an SOP if you apply for more than one major. So just stick to one major and one department and apply to that. Also, some students uh, was like, can we write our SOP or personal statement in Korean or can we mix? You can do that. Definitely, you can you can write in Korean if you if you have the confidence. If you feel that you can you can write it properly, uh, definitely you can you can write. Uh, there is no, but don't mix things like for example, four lines in English and two lines in Korean. That will not look very professional. So so don't do that. At the write the whole thing uh, in English or in Korean. Also, I see that these days because of chat GPT, many people are just getting the whole personal statement and super written by chat GPT. Uh, some are also getting like just copying and pasting from other samples. And the language is very, very, you know, it seems very robotic and lengthy and it's your language is grammatically perfect. You have used very advanced vocabulary and everything, but it doesn't look human. It looks like because when you, you, you write like a person writes, sometimes the sentences will not be that you know perfect. Uh, there will be like a little bit gap in flow and everything. But that's what make it human. That's the difference between human language and the language written by AI. So 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 I think keep it human. Write simple sentences and you know make it more interesting so that the other person when he's reading he she shouldn't feel like he's reading a research paper a boring research paper written by some scientist, right? He should be like feel like he's reading uh, something written by a student okay so so it's don't worry too much about you know your language being too you know uh, academic or anything it should be correct there shouldn't be any punctuation mistakes there shouldn't be any you know silly grammar mistakes or something those things get it checked properly but don't like over try to to you know make it perfect uh, and to i would say academic and, and better not use chat GPT or AI or all these things. And as everyone said, just try to answer the question. They have already given you very good pointers in the, you know, Africa, in the, that, is, that form itself, what they want to know about you. So, so make sure also check the, in the recommendation form, they have clearly, they are asking this to recommender. You write these things about the student. You want to know these things about the student. So try to mention these things in the, so that can also be a good hint for you that, okay, they want to know these things, whether I am compatible with this subject or not. How is my temperament? Like uh, by someone who just keep changing my mind about my major or something. So, 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 so that can also be a good thing. Now, one question that I want to ask um, here to everyone is all of you went through an interview. Interview happened. So yeah. how, how, how was it? Was it conducted by the university or was it conducted by uh obviously it was because most of you got through um i think all of you got through university track right mm -hmm. so how did it happen like uh because many of the students are confused about an in, in interview like how is it going to happen who is going to conduct interview will it be in korean will it be in english uh so one by one you can briefly uh, if, you know talk about it that will be really great so in my case, uh, I didn't like, it was not a one, one on one interview. They just asked some questions. They sent me some questions and asked me to record a video. Okay. In English or in Korean as you want, but mm -hmm. you just have to answer that questions okay. in an eight minute video or something. But that was just in my case for other people, for other batches, they were like taking one on one interview. So it's not like my university is just going to take like recorded video or something. Sometimes it changes also. Right. So you have to be prepared for that. 
and yeah i just have to answer some questions and i did my interview and my personal statement and study plan all in korean because i because i i was studying korean in lki and i just like got my topic level 3 so i was just like i just want them to be interested in me so that i can show that okay i'm really interested in your language so i just try my best to like in korean language if you know korean language then try if you know if you have topic then you can also it's not like you have to be perfect korean like okay your korean right. should be perfect still like if you are you will be like oh under confident my maybe my korean is not but they will like it they will yes, like your efforts what if there are so mistakes if are different, okay. yeah so if you are learning korean and you think that okay you can go for it, not perfect but at least you can write your personal statement or study plan or you can give interview you can go for it don't be perfect but still show your it will show your efforts towards korean exactly yeah mm, good point anyone else wants to talk briefly about their interview step yes like in my university apart from me there are six more indians like females okay. okay so everybody had different uh, interview like <laughs> two people didn't have the interview to have the written interview and i had one to one interview in my in which my western history professor was taking my interview and she just like my interview was i think it was the best like she just told tell me shalini about you everything and she was like talking like like we are talking now she was like, oh yeah very mm-hmm. friendly she was like okay you are so hard working i just read your sop and everything she was complimenting me and she was like very good so my interview was not like anyone else like the professional way it was very casual but obviously it's like it's for me not for everyone people can like have uh, group interviews or one to one right so it depends all on your like right okay thank you shritma shi how was it for you uh i had interview with another student and there were two people um my chick is coordinator and a professor from our uh, major so mm-hmm. the interview was very friendly and uh, they were asking uh, they asked me to introduce myself in korean because mm-hmm. i submitted my yes. korean language certificates and topic but for my friend she didn't have any topic certificate so she was allowed to answer in english they also mm-hmm. ask you if you are like comfortable then you can just introduce yourself in korean and all um for me it lasted for 10 to 15 minutes like both two people interview mm-hmm. and um they were extremely f- friendly and they were asking about the same question at first they were asking me and then her then for the second question they were asking her for the first time and then me and the fact is i changed my major my major was geography and i changed it to film but the my friend uh, she was already working uh, prof- as a professional in film uh, mm-hmm. field uh, so she, um, unfortunately like it was like that Mo- in most cases one of the two uh, interviewees were getting selected and so the thing is that i had no prior experience in film but uh i was somehow passed i couldn't pass the interview but my friend who was a professional unfortunately that time she couldn't so mm. it's very important to have faith in uh, whatever you were asked and mm. it's not like if you do not have any um, professional background in that field as long as you're interested as long as you have idea then mm. no you do not have the same major right so be confident and just do your best it will be mm. okay correct it will be okay so the interview was it went well for me and also i had much more confident because like in 2022 i ex- with expected graduation certificate i applied to the same university and i was selected by the university as well but mm-hmm. i couldn't pass the nid round so at that oh. time i had the same professor and i were mm-hmm. aware the questions and the environment everything felt so familiar to me so it just boosted my confidence and within this two years my profile was much more stronger and I I was pretty confident. So be confident. I think that's the key. Be confident. Correct. Sakshi. Uh, in my case, uh, my interview is on Zoom call one by one, one to one, and in my case, three professors were sitting around in front of me, and my interview was held in, uh, in at KST time. So make sure that you can manage according to your country IST uh, country mm-hmm. time and. 
one by one they are asking and they are asking everything from my SOP and study plan. And first I, I ask them that can I give my introduction in Korean and then after I want to switch in English and they are really comfortable with that. So that they allow me. And mm -hmm. my interview went for 20 minutes and they are asking me lots and lots of questions. It was just like that they want to know everything that I have written my SOP or not. They want mm -hmm. a confirmation. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I want to add that in my uh, uh, SOP, I have written about the Jeju National University that why I want, why I choose this university. So the same question my professor has asked me. And a part of this, I told them that the university is located at Jeju Island. And at this island, there is five kinds of medicinal plant, which is helpful for to obtain a medicine, which is really useful to cure a deadly, uh, deadly disease, which I have mentioned in my study plan for a research major. And at that time was very impressive point. And my all three professor told me, oh, good, you have already researched this much. So that was an impressive point for me. And I will suggest they already um, four or five days uh, before uh, they will send you an email about the in, um, interview date and everything. So make sure that before your interview, at least you can read your SOP and study plan five, six times and try to create questions from your SOP and study plan and open your mobile camera and just start giving your interview by yourself so that you can practice yourself. And at interview time, you have much confidence to give the answer because many of you are uh, going to write down your recipe by your own self. The only uh, uh, lacking point at the interview time is lack of confidence because they took your interview in English and lots of nervousness at that time. So practice in advance that at time, at interview time, you can frequently give them their answer. So uh, I just want, I asked this question because I wanted to show that, see, the experience was very different for everyone. So it, there's no one thing that is going to happen with the women. So all the universities have their own methods, their own way of conducting interviews. Some universities might decide that they don't need an interview. Let's say your application is very, very strong and they're already convinced that I want to take this, we want to take this student. They might say that no need of interview. And some universities may decide key will conduct. Some universities may give the you know uh, interview work to some let's say some senior student or some coordinator some may uh, some professor might be busy so they may not, not be available to take interview sometimes two or three professors can take interview so it's it all changes but they will update you they will it's not like they will just call you and they'll say okay let's have an interview it's not going to happen like that they will inform you in advance about time and how it's going to happen and you just have to be confident you should know what you know you have you want to do what you have written in your sop obviously it helps if you have a study, for example, let's say if you have applied for like, uh, Sakshi said, like if you have applied for some university which is located in Busan or in Gyeongju, it will be good if you just study a little bit about that city so that you can like, you know, talk about some interesting point about that city that I want to go to this university because I like, you know, Gyeongju or you, I like Busan because of this, this, this thing. So that, you know, obviously... They are human beings. So they love it that, okay, you, you are really interested in that city and then that university and so on. And obviously about your major, you should be. But overall, you shouldn't be panic or anything. Just it's like a human interaction and they are very friendly and they're not there to scare you or anything. They want to know more about you. They want to understand you. So just show who you really are and be relaxed and calm and it should be okay. So, 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 so that's, it, any uh I, I would like to ask kashish kashish like have i missed anything if there is any important question that you think we have not addressed uh yeah please please uh, you can ask uh, i think we covered all of them and i am uh, also seeing the chat also they have those similar questions so mm -hmm. yeah i think we covered all of them i will just look one more time to the sheet and i will let you know okay. Yeah, sure. So, so in the meantime, like some students was like, what about the, if the recommendation letter is not in A4 size or something enveloping? So, so because it's, it's the job of the recommender uh, and they, it's their job to put it in envelope. If you take it out and put it yourself in an envelope, I think don't do that. That will not be, it will not be acceptable. 
uh, if they have attached in some other you know size they envelop so just fold it like to a four size i think they have mentioned it in the application form also that if any document is uh, the size of the document is smaller than a four size then put it on a four size paper and then you know maybe uh, you know paste it or something glue it or if it is larger than a four then fold it to a four size that i think i, I just read the uh, you know it, this thing in the application form so so just follow that same thing most other points i think mm, we have already covered transcript and other things mm, provisional certificate so so if you have joined late anyone please watch the uh, recording of this session and you will i think i think we have answered all the questions anything we like any of you feel uh, anjali shalini or sakshi or um, shritama that maybe we have missed but it's a common confusion you can you can add from your end also i want to add something like about the eligibility criteria for undergraduate mm -hmm. like it's mentioned that we need a uh, 80 percentage yeah like that's a very common question people people yeah, ask that's them, a really common question that i always get like if we have 75% if we have 76% or yes, we have yes, 66% yes, yes. yeah but Weird question, i will speak I honestly that if there is a criteria criteria is for something like it's it's yeah. a work like criteria is there for something you need to like understand that criteria is there so that they will just have the people who have 80% above marks right so i will really recommend the people who have 75% or something if you have your like that that top 20 certificate in your class then go hmm. for it if you yes. don't have it then don't waste your money on a postal services and translations and applying for this it because it takes money also and your time also so don't go for it because it's not like that people in 12th class not having like 80 plus marks there are lots of people who have 90 plus and 95 plus and korea is mostly goes for educational background so don't waste your time and money on something that you already know the answer don't wait for anyone else to like okay clear your mind you should be that much self aware that if you don't have that much marks and if you have 70 like people are saying that we have 60% and let's say mm -hmm. we have 75% so i think that in indian education system if you are getting in your 12th class 66 65 75 that means that you are not that much good in studies i will speak really honestly that mm -hmm. means that you are you can't study that much because in 12th class people have 95% that means okay there are people who are studying for that and korean education system it's really stressful so even though you think that you can pass this gks after coming to korea you have to work really hard you will have to study your subjects like 6 7 8 subjects in korean or in english mostly undergraduate courses are available in just korean there are really few courses that are in english otherwise everything is in korean so now you have to study lots of things so what are you going to do that after that and even though i have a friend of mine and she has like maybe 76 or 77% and she applied for university track and the university clearly mentioned that we have the criteria of 80% so i we think that we can't accept your application that means that university are aware of that criteria and you can't just fool them okay maybe they will not notice it so don't go for it if you don't have that much marks i will be really honest because these days for half one and half mm. years i've got really lots of questions so first i didn't want it to be sound rude like okay to someone that okay if you have yeah, this yeah, person yeah. i want to break heart of people but yes. then sometime i i just see people wasting their money on a postal services on translation certificates on the courier services services when you are they are sending for university track and they get the answer like okay you are not selected for it for what you are doing wasting your time money for listening to that even if you still want to do it you can do it it's not like they are going to throw your application or something mm -hmm. so if you still want to apply for it go for it but i will suggest personally i will suggest don't go for it as a undergraduate because post graduate mm -hmm. people they say like i heard that post graduate people don't like getting the 80% mark percentage in your graduation is really hard the num like the uh, that marking system is really mm -hmm. difficult like different from that 12th class result so in 12th class it's not that much hard to get 80% at least 80% anyone anyway, so here got the that that 20 top 20 certificate from your school yes, yes. 
So yeah. you just got like a letter. And so how, it means like 20% of your batch size, like the class exactly, not the department, the yeah. whole department. No, like mine, uh, I was fifth in my class, like in graduation. So mm -hmm. it was written that uh, Shalini Bhagti, blog number mm -hmm. and everything. And she holds a fifth position in his or her class. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And they stamped yes. it and yeah, you yeah, applied yes. with that. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's pretty simple. So you have to see that is the eligibility criteria basically. For example, for any exam in India also, if they have a criteria that you should have a BA degree and you should have 60% marks, then that is the minimum. If you have MA, if you have 90%, that is good. But 60 BA, that is the minimum that they ask for. So you have to fulfill that criteria. So the minimum criteria here is you should have 80% marks or you should be in the top 20% of your batch, of, of your class. So if you don't fulfill any of these two criteria, then I don't think like if you are really lucky, for example, let's say in India, there is no one who has got 80% in 12th, then definitely they will maybe they can consider like we have one seat for India. So let's take someone who has 75. But that is not the case, you know, like people who, who people are getting even 99% and 100%. So, so, so there is no shortage of people with 80%. So, uh, like, make sure I, I was today. really embarrassed of one incident that happened in my university because people mm. are like applying for my university, okay, undergraduate mm. people from mm. India, and they are mentioning on their like SOP or their personal statement that Indian boards don't provide 80% above marks, so we can't have it. And which mm. is really like a like a complete <laughs> lie because yeah, if, like for that. Time. Yeah, mm. because my, my GKS conductor, go, like my GKS coordinator goes for me. He was like, because when he started his GKS work mm -hmm. as a coordinator, he knows me. And I went right. for some, some document submission and he was like, in India, we, you don't have 80% plus. I remember that you have a really good marks. And he was mm. like, we have 80%. And he was like, no, they say that in India, we don't get any 80% marks. And I was mm. like, okay, maybe their board might be different, but still you need to give them some kind of marking that okay this is how your school works just don't say it like you're just like saying okay we don't get it like where is the proof that you don't get 80 percent marks in your school so at right. least give them the proof okay this is the proof and our school marking system is like this and we don't get 80 percent hmm. so i was really embarrassed suddenly and i was like people at least give them the proof yeah. so they are yeah. getting so at least do yeah, over so it that, that is why they have this criteria of 20%. So yes. if the Indian board, they don't give 80%, then all of the students in your class must have got below 80, right? So yes. just, just show them that, see, this is the school's letter that no one got 80. And this student is also still like in the top 20 rank. So, so that they will accept it. But yeah, you have to show them one of the two you know, criteria. Mm. And, oh. and I will yeah. add one thing. In case yeah. of state board, because their marking scale is very different from the CBSE. CBSE mm. chose 100 scale, but a state board has their own marking scale. So mm -hmm. try to convert it on a scale row at four scale and attach that mm. so that they can understand because they will compare your mark 60% with the 80%. They didn't understand mm. the first division, second division or... Exactly. Uh, mm. So right. try to convert it on a scale row and then you are eligible for this. Mm. Okay. Kashish, like uh, you have any uh, other questions that you? Yeah, I have seen that uh, question similar. It's about mm -hmm. like after getting the GKS, like is there any part-time job with study option available to the student who get the no. scholarship? Like they're asking this. It depends mm -hmm. on the course. Depends it on depends the on the department. department. Yeah, yeah huh. department. So factors for actually. Us, so, hmm, yeah, go ahead. For us, we are not allowed. Like for art students, mostly I have heard we are not allowed. So yeah, and for uh for science students, yeah, they are allowed uh to do in the lab work or something like that. Even in some universities, technically the students are allowed, but your professors will not be very happy. They will be really angry if you ask them for permission because this is, the country is paying you money just to study. Mm -hmm. We are paying you this much money. Even if Korean students are really working hard, they're doing part-time job to pay their tuition fees. And mm -hmm. the government, Korean government is paying you money for your living expense, tuition fee and everything. And you want to earn more money instead of like starting in that time. So they'll be very, very... I, I, I know one of my juniors, he went to you know his professors and requested, can I 
you know, work for 20 hours or so uh, in a week. And he was really angry. He said that I will send you back to India if you ask this question again. Like you are here to study, right? So you should focus on your study and do something. Don't, you know, we're not here to earn money. Think about earning money or once you complete your course. So, but yes, having said that, there are students who, who work part-time without even informing. That's not legal, but I know many students who yeah. teach some tuitions, who teach some classes and do some. But finding part-time job itself like, is, is not easy as a foreigner. Like Obviously, the shopping malls and restaurants, they are not going to hire an Indian student because it will be very, very random and awkward to see some Indian person working in a shiktang or some shopping mall. So it's not very easy, actually. Uh, so, so don't, you know, keep your hopes on that thing, particularly in big cities. If you go to a small town, it's, it may be possible that they need some, you know, manpower. Uh, so I would say that, you know, don't think about that after completing your study, uh, obviously there are so many job fairs in Korea, so you can participate in them and, and it's not very difficult to get a job. You will get the salary will not be that high if hands or anything, but it's not, if you just be you know, consistent if you apply to many companies, if you have a proper resume and everything, you will get a job. If you have decided that I don't want to return to India after completing, you can do that. You can stay in Korea. There, are, I know so many people who have stayed in Korea. They got a job. Uh, but yes, you will have to work very hard and your salary will not be very, very fancy or anything. You will have to start and, you know, do the grind and, you know, reach to higher levels and so on. Mm, so, yeah. Any, anything else? Any other questions? Uh, yeah, and one I more think... is also... Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes continue. Yes. And I think I haven't gotten uh, the stipend yet, but I, mm -hmm. I think for Daegu or something like smaller cities, the stipend is enough. Like, it's, until it's unless you spend all your money in uh, Olive Young or uh, anything, yeah. <laughs> it's enough to survive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, enough for survival, yes. <laughs> You can buy some yes, cosmetics as well. I think it's yeah. good enough. Not much, but yeah. Mm -hmm. And and if you really want some more money, just get topic level five. They will give you, I think they give yeah. you, you know, a hundred K more every month. So work hard and get topic five and get hundred K more. Yeah. And yes. now they don't even have that rule. Now everyone is getting same money. Same, same thing. Money. Okay. Even if you have topic five, they don't give you. Yeah. Even if you no. don't have topic five, they, it doesn't matter. You will get the same money. They oh, increase really? the scholarship. Yeah. Oh, they but increase I the whole scholarship for everyone. Yes. Yeah. Overall. That's no, really because I have heard from my seniors that uh, the university exam, if you get like first or second place in your mm -hmm. class, then you mm -hmm. get some extra money. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know about that. There are so many things that, yeah, if you really want to earn money this is like no one can stop you like there are online jobs and there are so many things that you can do if you really want to do no one is going to check and track you uh what you are doing so but yeah otherwise don't count on it you know don't have too much expectations uh, yeah Kashish, you know, let's go yeah ahead. there was one more question related to shalini she they were asking like once you get the gks scholarship so how much money you take with you like when you go, ah. because you're not getting your okay. stipend uh, okay. right away. <laughs> yeah. So this was the biggest uh, problem with me also, as I didn't have that much of saving. So I took only 40,000 with me, to be very honest. And I was, for, for the because all my uh, friends were taking like one lakh, and I was like in depression for two days. How would I survive? What would happen if the money gets uh, ends and everything like that? But yes, when I came here, and uh, it has been 20 days, and I just spent like 100 or 200 dollars till now. And 100 dollars was for uh, like the bus, and for like my university didn't pick up. So for the bus and for ARC, for books and everything. Yeah, so my city is like not very expensive if we compare to Busan and Seoul. But yeah. I think 50,000 is enough. You can, like, don't buy unnecessary items. You can, like, survive in 50,000. Mm -hmm. It's enough. Yeah, when you just come to Korea, don't go to Daiso. Or you only yeah. Yeah, the first. Daiso is really, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I go to Daiso, I went to, like, buy just one thing. Okay, Chon one guy. Yeah. I have to buy. But yeah. the middle road, I have two huge bags in my hands. 
क्या क्या एंड इट्स इट्स नॉट इवन यूजफुल लाइक समटाइम्स इट्स लाइक दे थिंक इट्स सो मच यू डोंट इवन नीड दोस थिंग्स या राइट या लाइक आई हैव वॉट लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स व्हेन आई फर्स्ट केम टू कोरिया लाइक आई जस्ट वेंट आउट विद माय फ्रेंड्स टू डाइस टू ऑल इव यंग एंड समथिंग एंड आई ब्रिंग लॉट्स ऑफ थिंग्स माय मदर वाज आस्किंग लाइक व्हाट इज दिस फॉर एंड आई वाज लाइक I also yeah. don't know when it look good. They have weird stuff. Oh, they just look cute right. and they are cheap, so you buy yeah. just so many things. So don't go for Daiso in your first month. Then you will save your money. So I think fifty thousand is enough. Forty to fifty thousand, any more than yeah. that is yeah, better. Yeah, but not okay. Literally, yeah. Yes. So it's like an extended question. So Anjali, she I think she can answer this. So now, like, how long it took you to receive your first stipend there, like? after going to korea um that depends on the university helps also because our university was really helpful so we just get our money in 15 to 20 days mm-hmm. because we first we need to uh, like have a bank account open in korea and then we have to apply for a- arc so after these things then we get the money so our university was really helpful so in just 15 to 20 days we get the money yeah that's, that's... Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah, that was it. I guess the questions. I think this one uh, student. Uh, I think I read this question in the Excel sheet also. Like, let's say someone. Uh, uh, this student has is enrolled in BA already. Okay, in Delhi University, and she has done some extracurricular activities there. So she wants to add those certificates. But if she adds those certificates, she would have to mention that I am already enrolled in Delhi University. Yes. Will that harm the application? In some yeah, way? it will because you are already in a university. You don't want to mention that you are in a university, but you want to mention your certificates. Then there should be a link. Like why? Why do you have that certificate? So hmm. if you are not mentioning about your university, then don't mention the certificates that you have. From your no, university. she says that she wants to mention it, but if she mentions the university as well as the certificates, will there be? I think any... related to this, uh, written in the guidelines that if you already done your bachelor's, she hasn't done. You she are just, not eligible. She's doing. She's doing. No, it, right? no, no, no. She can't. She can't. Mm-hmm. Like I, I have, right. I have mm-hmm. some and... friends. They were already like studying when mm-hmm. they applied for undergraduate, mm-hmm. and uh, they like. they did mention that they were studying something and they just changed like their minds suddenly that was not working out for them but the thing is that depends on the person who is seeing your personal statement or study plan some people take it positively some people take it negatively so that depends right. on the people we can't decide if if this is going right. to be it's helpful difficult for us to but say like yeah we don't know like what kind of impact it will impression it will give to the person who is seeing your application mm-hmm. so you will have to take your chances whether you want to include that thing is that certificate really crucial uh, for your selection uh, or not if it is not that crucial then just you know let it go don't mention it if uh, oh, yes like everyone is really... asking like ask us like even if you are giving all the advices like here we have right. gk scholars and satish sir mm-hmm. even if you are giving all the advices sometimes it's not going to work out so it's exactly, not yet yeah. we are the perfect ones who are giving you the advices exactly. because no, that I'm... depends on the person who is checking your sheets or yeah. on what basis yeah. they are checking so please and the thing is that people send like emails like check our personal statement or study plan we are not going to decide even yeah. if we like it maybe he the person who is yeah. checking it he or she will not going to like it so don't think that okay maybe i we said this thing okay this is the only thing that we need and we will get selected yeah. maybe you can so So, so the, yeah, the, like anyone can check your application. They can give you brief, like uh, you know, feedback. Okay, maybe there are some mistakes, fix them, and other things. But overall, the content because it will differ person to person. Like a same the same movie, some people really like the movie, some people really hate the movie. So it's like that actually. So so we might really like your recipe that it's the best recipe I have read. But the selector, the professors may think that what is this? We don't like it. So it's person to person. So don't worry about. Just be honest, be truthful, and just do your best. And everything else is like you can just leave it to luck. You know, you can't do. You can't control the the results, right? You can't control you know what they will decide. So so don't worry too much about it. Ne, Kashish, anything else? Ah, no, sorry. That's all. So so I think those are all the crucial things that. For which we needed first-hand uh, responses from GK scholars who have applied recently. Other questions, if you still have any other questions about GK or other things, I I think I can answer them. So so just 
keep add your answer questions to the Excel sheet for the link of which I have already shared in the LKI group. And I will try my best to, to, to answer uh, your questions. But yes, don't keep, don't ask the same questions again and again. We have already uh, answered how to do the transcript and how to do with the apostle and everything. But if it's really, your question is really unique, anything that is totally uh, personal, a different situation, I will definitely answer them. So, okay. So, so make sure to you know, add your questions there. Mm. As far as I can remember, mm, yeah, we have covered everything. So I, I think, and it's also been almost two hours since we started. Okay, we had uh, decided that we will keep it six to eight. And it's already in Korea, it's 11.30, I think, uh, right? Almost 11.30. Almost 11.30, yes, so at night. So yeah, sorry for keeping you <laughs> this, this, this late. And thank you so much. You know, uh, uh, something Shri, I add uh, one Shri. advice if you got sure. one advice if you got sure, selected sure. by GKS scholarship, mm -hmm. please make sure in that four month or three month, please read Korean language till level yes, one. Yes, because yes. I have seen my classmates and mm -hmm. they didn't know basic hunger and mm -hmm. things are going too much fast here. Uh, mm -hmm. Just like not India. In India, we join online courses and we basically our teacher taught us four classes for hunger. And here in right. two days, everything khatam. Hunger is over. So mm -hmm. please learn at your, in your free time after your selection so that in starting days, you don't have that much pressure. Yes. So one more reason why I think everyone here, all the GK scholars are sharing positive experiences is also because they already knew Korean language before going to Korea. Yeah. I have personally met so many GK scholars who were really having a hard time in Korea, who were really having, Ki kaha gaya, kya hoga, how I'm yes, going to survive. Yeah. So they were really worried and tensed and their experience was not the same like you are hearing and here. But oh. here, because all the students who are joined here, they are already studying Korean language. So I think it's fine. But many people are going to watch this thing uh, in other places who are not learning Korean. Yeah. yeah so, so for them, yeah. Yes. Uh, who was going to? Is that Anjali uh, Yeah, I just like, I didn't check the chat because people were sending me direct messages. But I think that it was on okay. group chat. So I didn't check it. So okay, the okay, thing okay. is that there is, uh, I think Janvi asked the question that what mm -hmm. is associate degree when you are applying, when you have, you are applying for associate degree or at bachelor's degree, what does it mm -hmm. consider to be an associate degree? So mm -hmm. associate degree just have two years of degree and one year of language program. Okay. And if you are applying for a batch associate degree, you can give your 12th class result also and your bachelor's also. But mm -hmm. if you are like already done your associate degree and you are applying for bachelor's, so you mm -hmm. can use your associate degree as your previous degree and you can like in high school graduation certificate, there is a, if you check below, there is an option also for associate degree certificate or something. So you can use that certificate there. Okay. Have I you really want... seen anyone or met anyone there who is yeah. doing associate degree? Yeah, I have like friend, like yeah. two or three friends who just come with my batch. There are some different city, but I they're doing the associate The chances degree. of selection may be higher for associate, isn't it? Compared to yeah. bachelor's degree. Right, because yes. not many people apply for associate degree, so yeah. I would explore that option also. There uh, is a UIC option of also, like for engineering field, they are giving five plus. Yeah, points exactly, UIC. This time they have started it, university industry cooperation or something. Yes. So, so they are like, uh, and the, those courses have really, I think, very good placement opportunities because the uh, companies are supporting those courses. So try that also, UIC and mm, associate course you have been. Uh, Make sure to check those also. But and yeah, that, because that's a totally different path. So yeah, yeah, you have to make your decision. Yeah. And at the end, I will just say that if you are a LK student, just use your opportunity because it will be really helpful if you are an LK student and apply for GKS. Because as for me, LK was like a really like a like I I can say angel for me because it was really helpful because I used to learn Korean, then I applied for topic and I got my topic in three months or four months which was really helpful because you're like all the teachers. So I think that if you're an LKI student, so just have some benefits for there. Yeah, ultimately, but ultimately I would say again, again, it's all your hard work. Obviously teachers always, you know, we try our best, but ultimately, you know, uh, it's your hard work. So, so it's not easy to, I understand it's not easy to get topic level three or four or these things. They are 
you know you really need to put some effort in it. but yeah you see that there are students who have done it so yeah just put in your efforts and yeah you have at least you have the resources and you know people who can ask to so if you need any help yeah feel free to you know bother us anytime about topic preparation and we'll be there to help you yeah any anything else that anyone wants yes, to add yes and please make sure that you arrange your document according to the checklist also according for arranging document uh, they have clearly mentioned in the guidelines that how you need to arrange the document so please make sure at least three four times you read the guidelines before uh, preparing for your documents and if you don't have ielts or topic no need to worry because in uh, i have seen my friends uh, she has no ielts no topic she work mm. on her study plan and personal statement and she got mm. selected this year yes so it's happened yes it's a lot depends on you know so many factors so mm, yeah again just uh, i will emphasize again read the guidelines your own properly most of the things are like properly explained there uh, so so don't ignore that part and 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 one last thing is that even if you are not able to make it uh, don't blame yourself ki oh maybe i was not good enough or maybe i have this and that and it's not like that i have seen very very comp Pitching people, very very good qualified people getting rejected in GKS. So so it's not about you or anything. Okay, it's, luck plays a big role in it. So you may be perfect, you may be very intelligent, genius, but still you may be rejected because you don't know what applicant other applicants you are competing with. So that university might have received so many other you know great applicants from all over the world. and maybe the person who is reviewing your application maybe he is just having a bad day he is really irritated that day anything is possible right yeah. so don't blame yourself again try again next time there is no criteria restriction on applying again no yes. so so and that is one hmm. yeah uh, people are asking about the job see there is no hmm. such thing as you will get the job after studying gks or getting scholarship for okay. yeah, no one can predict those things yeah people suggested don't take history uh, do international relation or we are we are other subject because there is no job and anything mm -hmm. but i took because i was interested in this subject as my bachelor's also and i see mm -hmm. my scope my future in this subject but yes there is no such thing as job okay you have to search for the job okay they won't give you like present they won't present you a job okay so you need to search even if you are gks also because as a foreigner it's hard to find job in korea but i have met many people in the market they are from south india they are teaching here as a professor so yes you can get a job also and you can get a job also it depends it depends on your, you and your luck Yeah. yeah, and I would say don't get ahead of yourself. No need to worry about like what will happen after GKS will get get a job when you have you are not sure whether you will get selected for GKS or not. So just right at the moment, focus on what you are doing right now. What will happen later, we don't know, right? So so the job and other things, but yeah, remember that GKS is already a prestigious scholarship. Okay, so government is. uh inviting you from another country that please come to our country and study and we are going to pay for your tuition and we are going to pay for your living expense and everything so when you apply for a job the company is also know that the student has something then only the government has like invited this person from that country right so so you will not have a tough time or anything getting a job if you, if you have done your you know due diligence if you have focus on your study if you have got proper you know degree then i think uh, you should get a job very very easily yeah but obviously it should it would not be like a dramas or anything that you will become a ceo of some corporate like, like you know after gks that is not going to happen but yes uh, you will not have to like struggle for survival or anything it, it it's going to happen you will get it so and visa and everything they will guide you about it so don't worry just focus on your application and your sop and statement after and after selection they are like a spoon feeder yes they, they will guide, guide you everything every step, clearly yeah. every exactly. step exactly mm -hmm.
not only here but once you are core in korea like if you have any requirement any needs you can just go to your gks coordinator of the university they will help you in every way possible so they are very very helpful yes everyone is there is to you know help you in tough times so so no need to worry too much your only you know difficult part is the application process and after that the studying yeah that is going to be a difficult thing but yeah. apart from that life is going to be okay it will be smoother than you have it in India. So don't worry yes, too much. You will enjoy more. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. So uh, I think uh, that's that's good enough. Uh, so thank you again, um, Anjali, Shalini, Sakshi, and Shitma. I know you must be very, very busy. Uh, and still you found time to you know join this session and help the other students. So I'm really thankful for this. And... If really I have some question again that I'm not able to answer, I may bother you again through personal message or something. Okay. So, so, so sorry about that in advance there. And uh, if I can answer myself, I will try my best to help them. Yeah. So thank you so much. And I hope like mm, everything is good in your life and you are just well. Anjali is already adjusted, adjusted there. Um, yeah. And hopefully I will see you in Korea mm, soon if i don't know not sure yet but yeah today yeah. okay so and and thank you kashish for for helping uh, with the you know questions and everything during the you know session and thank you all the students for joining and wish you all the best for your gks applications yeah let's be in touch yeah Fighting, fighting, and best of luck. Hope to see you soon in the South Korea. Bye bye, Kashi. 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 Bye b